Okay, before we can get started, there's something really important we got to tell you. This is not a 1986 Ford F-150. If you're going to do this job in a Honda or Toyota or any other modern car, make sure you get OEM quality parts. Do not go to an aftermarket part place. Don't be a balloon head. Don't go to these places. What you want to do is you want to find out what the OEM part is and then who makes that OEM part. For instance, gasket, ASIN. ASIN's an OEM Japanese supplier. They make radios. They make all kinds of transmissions. They're a top quality manufacturer. There's my gasket. Thermostat. Okay, it doesn't say Honda, but do your research. It says Tama Enterprises. That Tama Enterprises, if you go online, is an OEM supplier of Honda and Toyota. So check it out. That's an OEM part. You don't want to put aftermarket part unless you want aftermarket performance. You want it to perform as it was originally intended to. So please, don't be a babouche. Get the original stuff. That's half of the battle. You don't want to go through this job again. Believe me, you don't want to do it. Okay, for those of you who've seen these thermostats for the first time, they have a nipple on them. It's an air breather little nipple valve over here. It's not a mammal. It's only got one nipple. Not two, not three. It has to stay on top. And when you install the thermostat, it has to stay in the upright position in order for it to function. So you take this gasket. Remember, OEM. Stick with OEM. You take it out. See, it's got a little bump there. That's in the uppermost position. It's pretty much unidirectional. So when you put it on, you just pop it on the side like this. And then you're all set. When you have the gasket on, it should be nice and cozy and nice and tight and even all around. Again, make sure this is near the top by the little breather valve over here. When you finally place it in, that should be the area that stays on top as you insert it. Okay, before you start the job, here's some very important tools that you need. This is what you're going to need. 10 millimeter wrenches. Get a ratchet for the engine cover. Get this for any 10 millimeter bolt that's out of your reach with a regular wrench. Now. I cannot stress that this is one of the most important parts you get for your toolkit. Adjustable ratcheting wrenches. 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter, 14 millimeter. That's one of the most invaluable tools you could think of. You got that, you got that, and a good set of nitro gloves. Please wear nitro gloves. Whenever you deal with fluids that have contaminants in them like antifreeze or any kind of used motor oil, please use a good set of nitro gloves. My uncle, my granddad, they never use this stuff. They got all kinds of shit growing out of their necks. Okay, first thing that comes off is the engine cover. One, two, three, and four. Okay, step number two. Two like little plastic 90 degree screws that you take off. Very easy. You just Twist them a quarter turn each, and voila, whoops, a little bit too much more than a quarter turn. And there we go. Okay, so this, the thermostat's on the right side of the engine as you're looking towards the front of the car over here. Okay, there's my H for Honda. You go in here, you go in deep. If you're good, you're not going to have to remove much of anything aside from the engine cover. So as we go down and deep, like a little expedition, you can see nestled in there is the thermostat housing. Okay, you can see it there. There are a few bolts you could just about get to over there. Let's try and do it. Okay, make it easy to see. We disconnect two of these electrical connectors. And what do we got? We got the thermostat in there, thermostat housing. Okay, you want a little bit, get a little bit of a close look. You got the first bolt over there. And then you want to take this electrical connector off as well. It's one right there, you want to take that one off. That makes it a lot easier to see. Okay. Yeah, don't forget to take that off. And then you start off with this bolt right there. And then there's one on the opposite side that you take off as well. 
not too bad. Once you get all the plastic off here, not too bad an engine to work on. We're gonna take these little screws off first on each side over here. Before we actually take the hose off. Okay, as you see, it's not too bad. The one on the other side, that's another story. You may be doing a little bit of cursing. Okay, there's also a little electronic connector over here, a sensor. You press it and you take that off. That way you can there's no, no wires attached to the thermostat housing. Okay, as you can see, I got this sucker out. This little Jumanji didn't come out too easy. But that's because I didn't take a lot of this other stuff off. If you're good, you get it out with a nice wrench like the one I just shown you over there. That guy over there. Otherwise, you'll have to take over this whole intake plenum. You got to get it out. But if you can maneuver it, you get that other bolt out. As soon as you do that, yep, it's like you struck oil and there's a whole bunch of fluid coming out of there because there's a little bit of space. The uh, thermostat housing is now loose. So now I'm going to take that puppy off. Okay, as you can see, the thermostat housing is now off and I'm pointing to the thermostat over here. Now, I'm not one of these YouTube guys that takes the whole thing apart and puts it together again and then dismantles it for the YouTube video. I take it as it comes. So, obviously, this thermostat's a little bit stuck. It's stuck in there, it's been in there for 100,000 miles. What I'm gonna do is take a piece of metal and we're gonna coax that little puppy out of there. Ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to meet my coaxer. Nice set of pliers. I coaxed this sucker right out. And what do we got here? We got 100,000 miles in about 10 years of crud there. That's why it took a little bit of doing to get this puppy out. Not saying that this thing still didn't operate, but I was getting a little bit of seepage with power, with the coolant coming out. So that means this had to go. While I'm changing the gasket, you have to be crazy not to change the thermostat as well. When you take that lower housing off, Guess what? It's raining down here. We got a whole bunch of fluid just coming down here. Radiator fluids. So before you do this job, make sure you get a whole gallon of radiator fluid ready. Use the OEM stuff. We went through that before. I'm not gonna say it again. OEM. OEM meaning from your friendly local Honda dealership. Antifreeze coolant, 50-50 diluted. You pour it straight in, straight up. Just like Jack Daniels. Okay, as you see, there's a little bit of crud in there. Now that I took the thermostat housing off, so there's a little bit of crud. So we want to scrape that out. Do not use metal, metal screwdriver or metal scraper. So that means we need another tool. You know what? Here's my pointed tool. This is what we're going to do. Here we go. I just made another tool, a piece of wood dowel over here. Part of my pointer, sure he doesn't mind. We're going to take this and we're going to clean out the crud with a piece of wood. Okay, as you can see, I cleaned both the housing. Oh, by the way, I left the hose on there. It was too much of a bitch getting it off. So I found out if you could, if you could bend it over, you could get the same job done. I cleaned up the, uh, the, the thermostat housing on the outside. I cleaned it up on the inside as well. Now, if these hoses are over 50 or 60,000 miles, then what you want to do is you want to replace them as well. These are pretty new. I replaced them last year because I was doing a timing belt job and I replaced it. They're nice and flexible still. They're not going to crack. So just make sure you clean those surfaces pretty good because look what we have here. The old thermostat had mounds of crud on there. That really didn't do too much for the ceiling. Time to go, buddy. So, here we go, the old and the new. Ordinarily, Honda with gaskets like this, the machine surfaces, they do not recommend putting any sealant in between the thermostat housing and the mating surfaces. So O-ring gaskets usually do not need any kind of sealant because you're sealing against machined surfaces. Now, I'm just saying after 20 years, some of these aluminum machine surfaces get a little pitted. I leave it up to you, your discretion. You may want to use it. Hey, I fix all kinds of stuff. Cars, boats, motorcycles, toys, you name it. Stay tuned, you never know. I may get more than one subscriber.